Hello, my dear students. This is Dr. Smita Nayak, Professor in HOD at Gelot Institute of Pharmacy. And the subject that I am teaching you currently is Industrial Pharmacy Part 2. Under this topic, today we are going to discuss a very, very important chapter that discusses quality management systems, the concepts of quality and how they can be used in the industry. Having learned from this chapter, you will be in a better position to understand the basic concepts of quality management, its influence and how to apply it at the workplace and different departments. This chapter stresses the importance of effective quality management and outlines the principles of quality management system. This chapter describes, distinguishes and teaches several techniques and quality management tools. It will help you to understand about quality certifications and in this chapter, you will understand about regulations and phases of quality processes. Okay, so let us move forward and understand what this chapter is all about. In this chapter, we are going to learn the following topics. Concepts of quality, total quality management or TQM, QBD or quality by design, Six Sigma concept, OOS that is out of specification, change control which we have already seen briefly earlier. Additionally, two current aspects that is ISO 9000 series of quality systems standards and the ISO 14000 series will be introduced to you briefly in this chapter. In addition, we are going to look at certification by NABL and we are also going to understand what is the importance of GLP that is good laboratory practices. So let us go further without much delay. I begin with the definition of QMS or quality management system. QMS is a documentation of a business processes, functions and policies necessary for the continuous improvement of quality which is aimed to ensure customer expectations and meet or exceed the requirements of the customers. So let us try to understand this definition word by word. Documentation of businesses, processes, functions and policies <coughs> which are necessary for the continuous improvement of quality aimed to ensure the customer's expectations. So in today's world, the customer expects quality and not only quality but also improvement in quality. So what are the quality standards today? Tomorrow the standards will be higher. Therefore, there is a need for continuous improvement of quality and managing this continuous improvement in quality is nothing but QMS. Okay. So the definition of QMS talks of continuous improvement of quality in a manner that we are able to meet the customer expectations or to exceed their requirements. Moving forward, let us read through what are the objectives of quality management. Quality management provides high quality drug product to the patients and the prescribers. So the end user gets product of high quality. It prevents or reduces the number of rejects the number of recalls 
returned or salvaged products and also the defective products that may enter the marketplace effective quality management harmonizes the G cgmps with other important systems such as iso 9000 iso 14000 etc such systems are capable of handling many types of changes in equipments processes etc without there being a need for regulatory submissions again and again quality management systems help in getting quality by design so the whole concept of quality by design starts with the quality management system and qbd as we know i will explain to you as we go further in order to achieve success in business in modern performance oriented markets qms helps by increasing competitiveness by increasing productivity by improving risk management and thereby directly or indirectly improving profitability let us try to understand what are the elements of the quality system quality system has three major elements quality management quality control and quality assurance let us try to understand in brief what these terminologies mean quality management is a means of implementing and carrying out the quality policy remember i told you that each company has its own quality policy which reflects the attitude of its top management to the quality system and this quality policy is a written document which has to be implemented it is implemented by the application of quality management systems in the entire organization quality management plans goals and manages the activities of qc and qa quality management personnel monitor all quality goals and the objectives of quality are implemented and where necessary corrective actions are taken quality management systems frequently review the quality system to ensure effectiveness and to identify and review any deficiencies <coughs> thus quality management is nothing but a means of implementing and carrying out the quality policy coming to the next element of the quality system that is quality control now this is a terminology that all of you are familiar with qc or quality control encompasses all techniques and activities of an organization that continuously monitor and improve the conformance of the product process or service to specifications so qc is nothing but using techniques technologies to test evaluate product process the manufacturing process or services to specifications so specifications have been laid down and whether the product or the process or the service complies with these specifications is evaluated by quality control its duties also include review of the processes and specifications and make recommendations for their improvement so not just testing but review of the processes specifications and further improvement is also a part of the duties of quality control qc activities also include the selection and categorization of suppliers to ensure that purchased materials meet the quality requirements now which suppliers are we talking of suppliers of raw materials suppliers of packing materials suppliers of testing materials suppliers of equipments and instruments okay 
so adhering so not only the process and the product should adhere to quality but also the materials the input into the particular batch the formulation or the testing materials all have to conform to quality standards and testing and ensuring that the product process or material conforms to quality is the duty of the quality control department right so quality control department looks into testing and comply and ensures compliance with the laid down specifications it also gives suggestions on for improvement and it also selects vendors or suppliers that will help to uh, and that will help in the procurement of materials that meet the quality standards coming to the third element that is quality assurance all planned and systematic actions necessary to assure that a product or service will satisfy the specific specified requirements so quality assurance mainly deals with laying down systems that will ensure that the product or the service will meet the specified requirements if you want to learn more about quality assurance you can open any standard textbook and read up about it so in the previous slides we discussed the three elements of quality system that is quality management quality control and quality assurance we now move forward to understand the concept on which the quality system is based one of the concepts that i came across is the pdca concept that is plan do check and act how to ensure that quality is built into the system plan quality do whatever is necessary check whether quality has i mean in, uh, built into the system or if necessary carry out appropriate actions so pdca or plan do check act is a one of the concepts of the quality system establish plan means establish the objectives of the system and its processes obtain the resources necessary to deliver results in accordance with the customers requirements and the national regulatory authorities policies and identify and address the risks and opportunities so in brief planning is very very necessary understanding the objectives and planning accordingly the second step involves implementation of whatever has been planned next once the action has been performed it is necessary to check monitor and measure the processes and the resulting a resulting product and service and see whether they are meeting the requirements laid down in the various policies such as quality policy whether the quality is meeting the objectives and the requirements of the customers and whatever has been planned and make a report of the results if the results are favorable fine if there is a need to further improve quality then the company has to act and take action to improve performance as and where necessary now we move on to the next concept of total quality management as you know the pharma industry world over is changing rapidly due to globalization increased competition cost constraints uh, constraints demands for efficiency international regulations supply chain complexity product complexity process complexities are some additional factors that have led to the fierce competition only those industries which can adapt to such a dynamic environment will be successful in the future therefore companies that are engaged in the manufacture of materials should necessarily monitor establish maintain and implement as various aspects of the quality management system 
which will ensure the delivery of resources products services and materials that have the desired quality and as well as safety so while we talk of quality management systems one of the concepts that has come up is that of total quality management pqm is a management philosophy which implements all the activities through which the needs and expectations of the customer and the community and as well as the objectives of the organization are satisfied in the most efficient and cost effective manner so total quality management looks at two aspects one is fulfilling the customer requirements as well as sat satisfying the customer effectively and profitably as well as looking into the profit of the company because no company can function if it does not generate a profit okay so aim of tqm is to fulfill customer requirements in all aspects as well as satisfy them effectively and at the same time profitably for the company tqm is a relatively new concept of quality control it is basically a management function which involves the direction of the top management and coordination of all quality related activities through the company to achieve zero defects and customer satisfaction so these are some important words that have been used here zero defect and customer satisfaction okay so zero defect will lead to increase in profitability and if the customer is satisfied he will keep coming back again and again okay thus tqm is a means of satisfying the customers first time every time and enables the employees to solve problems eliminate wastage and thus increase profitability without compromising of quality tqm requires that all stakeholders work together to improve product process services and culture of the company this topic of tqm is of contemporary interest it is useful and applicable to the industrial pharmacist one who is working in the industry to the community pharmacist who is working in the community in contact with people and to all those who are conscious about quality what are the areas in which the customer should be satisfied let us look at these areas in brief because we are talking of quality management and quality is a measure of the user satisfaction provided by the product the product that is designed by using these quality systems should be functionally efficient it should have an aesthetic appearance the product should be easy to install and operate it should be safe the product should be reliable easy to maintain and have low running and maintenance costs so whatever systems are built whatever quality is in, incorporated into the system it should look at the end customer satisfaction and the customer is satisfied provided the product he gets is efficient aesthetically appearing easy to use safe reliable easy and low cost maintenance let us move forward to the elements of tqm tqm is a guiding factor and a persistent approach for managing the quality it is an effort by the organization to change its whole approach to business and incorporate quality thus total quality is nothing but a description of the culture attitude and organization of the company that strives to provide the customers product with products and services that satisfy their needs 
so the three elements main elements of tqm include focus on the customer that is understand what the customer wants focus on involving the employees in understanding and carrying out the necessary activities and the third focus is on continuous improvement of quality here it is essential to identify who the customers are customers are those who use the organization's product or services also employees are internal customers as quality should become a part of the day to day activities and it becomes this uh, quality becomes a responsibility of all the employees therefore it is necessary to involve all the employees in the quality initiatives that are taken by the top management so amongst the employees there are certain team leaders who are in close contact with the management and the external customers and thus they should be roped in involved in ensuring the involvement of the employees in the quality initiatives thus employees must be given the authority to innovate and continuously improve quality quality improvement in quality is a never ending process and it involves people continuously working to improve the performance so improvement in performance improvement in speed improving the number of features of the and type of features of the product or the service all these are continuous improvement activities that should be encouraged and that should be carried out by the top management as well as the employees even a small incremental improvement that occurs on a regular basis will eventually lead to a huge improvement in quality high customer satisfaction and greater profitability for the company let us try to understand how total quality can be managed there are seven points described here and which i will discuss now in brief if you want to know more about it you can go to any standard referred uh, recommended textbook and read about it now what are the seven points in managing this total quality the major components for managing total quality include leadership customer satisfaction strategic commitment employee involvement partnership with suppliers technology and methodology coming to leadership the top management must realize the importance of quality and understand that while quality is the responsibility of everybody the ultimate responsibility of ensuring implementation of quality is that of the top management let us say the ceo so the involvement of the top management to continuous quality improvement is very very important the leader or the top management must pay special attention to the external customers to whom they are selling the product as well as the internal customers who are the employees the leader must empower his subordinate and encourage collaboration rather than competition he or she must provide resources training and work environment which will help the employees to do their jobs he should train and coach them and not just direct and supervise here the focus should be on emphasizing improvement rather than maintenance and prevention so the leadership from the top should begin from the top management and should reach the bottom top management must be educated in the tqm philosophy and various concepts and pass on the information and knowledge lower down the second aspect of quality total quality is customer customer and customer customer satisfaction is the most important point which will ensure that profitability increases and how will the customer be satisfied 
only when the desired quality is delivered to him. So as far as any business is concerned, customer is the king and he is always right. At the same time, customer expectations are constantly changing. Therefore, satisfying the customer is a very complex operation but is very much possible when quality is built into the system. The organization needs to continually understand and examine the quality systems and practices and be responsive to the changing, improving needs, requirements and expectations of the customers. There must be a checklist wherein the expectations of the customers are identified and, there, and the measures and the level of, and the level of uh, activities to be carried out to satisfy the needs of the customers, necessary corrective actions, etc. are planned. Also necessary is to take customer feedback, which will help to discover reason for dissatisfaction expectations in terms of quality price delivery comparison of performance with competitors etc thus satisfying the customer with respect to his expectations on not only quality but also price delivery and comparison with competitors is a very very important aspect of managing total quality next strategic commitment by the management big is the first step in tqm okay so this means that the organizational culture must first be tuned to understand that quality is not just a one time activity or a model but it is a goal that must be achieved every time the decision to achieve this quality has uh, certain implications in terms of finances expenditures are involved so expenditure for new equipment for infrastructure for maintenance upgradation all this is necessary and is possible only when there is a commitment by top management to improving the quality Another important aspect, just like the top management should be committed to quality, the employee of the organization should be equally involved. Thus, involvement of the employee is another critical element that will help to improve quality. It has been seen that all successful quality programs involved making the person responsible for doing the job and ensuring and following up that the job has been done in the right manner. The quality of the output, that is the product, will be good only if the input, that is the materials that are used in the process are good. Thus, improvement in quality, which is, which is possible by having good suppliers should be looked into. The purchased materials that which contribute to about 40 to 50 percent of the cost. Therefore, it is necessary to ensure that the supplier is managing quality on his part. Most of the quality problems come from substandard supplies from the suppliers, and therefore, it is very necessary to have partnership with supplier to achieve quality. And this can only be possible when there are there is a long term partnership and long-term purchase contract therefore selection of the suppliers is very very critical suppliers must be evaluated for their potential and the best suppliers who can supply quality inputs or quality raw materials should be finalized joint quality planning and execution by the organization and the supplier must be done suppliers should be rated based on the quality the defects in their goods must be identified the price must be negotiated and the delivery and service must be ensured by the suppliers thus partnership with the supplier goes a long way in ensuring quality of the finished goods supply and when i say supplier i mean suppliers of the raw materials 
technology has played a great role in improving the quality and efficiency of the materials therefore use of tech newer technology is always used beneficial and encouraged in tqm programs investing in state of the art machinery and equipments that are capable of complying with the cgmp requirements and are capable of doing the proposed jobs precisely reliably without compromising on quality is very very important coming to methods improvement in methods that is the manufacturing methods testing methods processing or servicing will always lead to enhancing the quality of the product or the service therefore methods operating systems or procedures employed by the organization during the conversion of the raw materials into finished goods should be looked into and continual improvements should be incorporated into the current existing methodologies let us now look at the various tools that can be used for the management of quality many organizations use several type of tools that can be used to help monitor and manage the quality analysis initiatives through process analysis planning and decision making once the quality vision mission and value statements are developed it is necessary to analyze the organization's process and provide information needed to develop policies procedures and work instructions to carry out the quality management there are seven management tools there are in nine management tools that are used generally for quality control these tools are used for different types of problem solving opportunities let us understand what these uh, tools are you can see the names of the tools here flow charts cause and effect diagram brainstorming fade or focus analyze develop and execute swot analysis pareto diagram check sheets control charts and histograms i will explain these to you in brief to understand more about these tools you can go on the net or you can go to any textbook which explains more in detail about the tools that are used in the management of quality the first and foremost is what is called as a flow chart a flow chart is a diagram that uses lines and a set of symbols to show the different steps from the beginning to the end of an activity or procedure flow charts are used to show changes in a process when the improvements are made they are also used to document work process flows this tool is very effective in determining the bottleneck or breakdown in work processes flow charting the steps of a process gives a clear picture of what the procedure looks like and it can help to throw light on issues within the pro problem areas within the process the second is called as the cause and effect diagram this is also called as the fish bone diagram and generally come arises out of a brainstorming session wherein various causes are identified for an effect the resulting diagram will show a relationship between the identified cause and the effect under consideration third is what is called as brainstorming this involves the uh, meeting of people and putting their brains together and coming up with solutions so when you put the right group and people together and let them brainstorm on the issues arising uh, uh, in quality then the re constructive results is the outcome there are many potential uses for this technique many quality programs have been found to make use of quality circles or focus groups which will develop ideas for uh, improvement of quality brainstorming can be used for selected problems or it can be used as a part of day to day activity 
the fourth tool is that of fade or focus analyze develop and execute the information that is developed during brainstorming is organized analyzed and then executed next is the swot analysis swot refers to strengths weaknesses opportunities and threats it is a mod method of analysis of the environment and the company swot has two parts the strengths and the weaknesses refer to the strengths and weaknesses of the employees of the company whereas the opportunities and threats refers to the external environment wherein these exist the strength of the company is in managing the these uh, all, uh, problems and uh, weaknesses quickly comprehensively the weakness may be in the distribution of the products or maybe the delays that are occurring or internal issues that have to be understood and dealt so once the strengths and weaknesses are, are known the strengths should be capitalized upon and the weaknesses should be worked out so that the weaknesses are eliminated also important is to understand in the external environment what are the newer opportunities to improve quality what are the threats that can arise many a times consultants are called in to assess these aspects uh, on the belief that as an outsider the consultant can give more in, in, insights into the company also the social economic legal regulatory and national environment should be understood to determine what opportunities are can arise and what are the potential threats okay so strengths and weaknesses refers to the internal environment of the company which is to a large extent in the control of the company whereas opportunities and threats which come from the outside are not in the con control of the company however knowledge of these opportunities and threats can help the company to manage the and to fulfill the customer requirements and satisfy the customer next is the pareto rule which was discovered by an italian economist welfredo pareto he observed that 80% of the wealth of the country was controlled by only 20% of the families so that is why it is called as the 8020 rule 80% of the wealth of any country is is managed and controlled only by 20% of the families thus if you correlate this to the quality environment it is observed that a major portion of the quality problems is because of a few types of defects arising out of a relatively few number of causes so if these few causes which are uh, uh, responsible for defects in quality are identified and controlled then the quality problems can be solved to a very large extent in an organizational problem analysis it was seen that 80% of the problems are caused by 20% of the causes therefore identifying this 20% of the problematic areas and solving them can lead to solving of 80% of the problems this rule is called the 8020 rule or the vital few rule and is applicable in the pharma industry as well coming next to what is called as a check sheet a check sheet is a basic quality tool which can be used to collect data for example a check sheet can be used to understand and to track the number of times the same incident occurs or the same problem occurs so in this check sheet this tool can be used to design a number of questions and the information that is obtained from the let us say the production department will help to identify the problem area and the opportunities to overcome these problems thus by using a check sheet and by designing a questionnaire the problem areas can be specifically identified and then worked upon coming to control charts 
control charts are used to plot data points over time and they give a picture of the movement of that data the such charts demonstrate that when the data is consistent or when it goes up or when it goes down so it understands the behavior or the trend of the data it focuses on monitoring the performance over time by looking at the variation in data points and it distinguishes between causes and variations to give you a simple example tracking of the hardness of tablets of a particular batch over 24 hours that compression was going on can be done with the use of control charts lastly we come to histograms histograms as we know are bar charts so such histograms or bar chart pictures of the data will help to identify patterns that fall within the typical processing conditions whenever there is a change in the process the data changes an analysis of a minimum of 50 to 75 data points will ensure that patterns are detected and when such data or histograms are analyzed the variations can be understood in a much much better manner and the problem areas can be identified and the quality issues can be resolved thus total quality management is a management philosophy which implements all the activities through which the needs and expectations of the customer the consumer and the community are met as well as the efficient and cost effective manner of carrying out these activities leads to profitability and there is a continuous improvement in quality thus tqm is a means of satisfying the customers first time every time however there are certain drawbacks or obstacles in implementation of tqm and which is what we are going to look at in this slide first of all there is a lack of company wide definition of quality laying down of the quality policy vision and mission is no assurance that the entire organization has understood what is quality there has to be a company wide focus on what is quality which is lacking in many a times there is a lack generally seen a lack of formalized strategic plan for change remember for continuous improvement in quality there should be constant change or upgradation which is lacking many a times the customer himself is not able to describe or lay down his specifications for quality thus lack of customer focus lack of inputs from the customer is a major obstacle in implementation of total quality poor inter organizational communication inter departmental across departments across employees from the top management to the bottom the communication of the expectations of quality should be perfect and should be well understood if there is poor communication between the departments or between the management and the employees this can lead to obstacles in implementation of tqm Emplo empowering the employees is a major requirement for implementing tqm but rarely it so happens that the employees are empowered so lack of real employee empowerment is another obstacle similarly lack of trust by the employees in the senior management can also go a long way in proving to be an obstacle many a times managements look at quality program as a quick fix so they do some shortcuts in order to improve the quality but sustaining the improved quality and further improving the quality is not done thus thinking of quality as a one time measure or a quick fix does not help short term financial results by compromising on quality is a major hazard to quality management and improving quality thus where the management has a drive for short term financial results and compromises on improving quality upgradation empowering the employees in such a case 
quality cannot be assured and this can lead to long term losses also inter departmental uh, com uh, company politics and turf issues contribute to uh, obst as obstacles in implementation of tqm the next topic that we are going to learn about is that of quality by design or called as qbd in brief as we know the pharmaceutical industry is constantly searching for ways to ensure and enhance safety of the product quality and efficacy of the product in spite of all efforts traditional manufacturing traditional testing still leads to significant number of drug recalls manufacturing failures scale up issues and regulatory burden this has in the recent past proven to be a huge challenge for industry for whom profitability is design is based totally on the quality of the product so traditionally the product quality and performance which was ensured by end product testing but with a limited understanding of the actual manufacturing process and the parameters was done therefore a concept that has come into the limelight in the recent times and is acceptable accepted well by both the industry and the drug regulatory authorities is the quality by design approach this is a scientific risk risk based comprehensive and proactive approach for development of any pharmaceutical product so this move or this concept instead of relying on finished product testing alone it provides insights into the entire development process it analyzes the entire development processes by definition qbd is a systematic approach to pharmaceutical development that begins with predefined objective and emphasizes product and process understanding and process control it is based on sound science and quality risk management thus qbd requires that all critical formulation attributes and process parameters should be identified and it also it also expects determining the extent to which variation can impact the quality of the finished product thus a qbd approach requires that all critical attributes or qualities of the formulation for example hardness of the tablet should be identified and process parameter and variation in the parameters which can affect the quality of the finished product so tablet hardness can be impacted by the concentration of the binder by the size of the granules by the speed of the compression machine so all these these uh, attributes should be identified and all the critical parameters that can impact this attribute should be listed and worked upon so let us go forward and understand more about the quality by design approach this concept of quality by design is so important and so critical to building in the quality of the product that it has been included under the ICH guidelines so ICH Q8 which discusses aspects of pharmaceutical development ICH Q9 based on quality risk management and ICH Q10 which discusses pharmaceutical quality systems and further ichq 11 based which gives the guidance for development and manufacture of api or drug substance all of these discuss the various aspects of quality by design what are the objectives of qbd approach one to get meaningful product quality specifications based on efficiency to increase processing cap capacity and reducing the product 
changes and defects by increasing production capacity and process structure understanding and control so it is necessary to increase profitability that the pro production should be capacity should be high this is possible only when quality by design concept is used thus it helps to increase the capacity of production reduce the product changes or formulation changes reduce the number of defects and in increase the understanding of the process and control of the manufacturing process another objective is to increase product development and production efficiency so it's all about efficiency quality and improved increased capacity to post management of original cause analysis and approval changes so to understand and analyze the causes as well as approve the changes all these are the objectives of quality by design further the, there are several advantages if the company adopts quality by design it helps to eliminate batch failures it helps to minimize deviations and costly investigations it helps to avoid regulatory compliance problems qbd empowers the technical staff it ensures an efficient agile and flexible system qbd helps to increase the manufacturing efficiency reduce costs project and that is predict rejections and waste qbd helps to build a scientific knowledge base for all the products manufactured by the company it helps develop better interaction with the overall industry and the external environment on issues related to science qbd ensures that the information that is passed on is consistent qbd also incorporates risk management as a tool and thus min helps in minimizing the risks involved q because of qbd there can be reduction in the end product testing so this is like building quality assurance into the system and qbd helps to speed up the decisions related to release of the finished batches thus qbd implementation of qbd although it is time consuming and requires a lot of uh, time cost there are several advantages all of which contribute to imp continuous improvement in quality meeting the customer requirements and profitability for the company this is a slide wherein the traditional approach has been compared to the qbd approach with respect to overall pharmaceutical development that is the r&d part of it and the actual manufacturing process in the traditional approach pharmaceutical development or uh, formulation development is mainly empirical based on certain hypothetical concepts and ideas and whatever development is done whatever trials are done one variable is changed at a time for example the uh, binder the concentration of the binder 10 mg 20 mg 30 mg per tablet so one variable is changed at a time trials are taken the finished product is evaluated conclusions are drawn and further formulation development takes place so where one variable is uh, changed at a time and testing and evaluation is done the whole process becomes time consuming labor intensive as against this in the qbd approach a systematic mechanistic understanding of the material attributes and process parameters to the drug product attributes is done multivariate experiments to understand the product and the process are carried out so maybe the hardness as well as the thickness of the tablet are varied by carrying out suitable experimental design and here it is not one variable one concentration a design space is established and and simultaneous changes in the parameters and the attributes is carried out to come up with the best possible or the optimal formulation with minimal time effort and labor here modern 
tools such as the process analytical technology tools or PAT tools are utilized. So all these are concepts which you can learn more about if you open any standard textbook. As far as the manufacturing process is concerned, once the formula is transferred from the laboratory to the manufacturing area, the process and the parameters are fixed. Any validation that is carried out is done on the initial batches. And here the focus is more on optimization of formula and reproducibility so that the batches can be consistently produced with the same quality time and again. As against this, when the QBD approach is used, because a design space has been established, it is possible to carry out minor variations in the manufacturing process within that design space without any regulatory objections. There is a life cycle approach to validation, which means validation is done periodically and continuously. And the focus here is on controls, how the process can be controlled and how the process can be made more robust. Use of statistical tools is encouraged and mandatory in, in the QBD approach. Thus, you can see that as far as the traditional approach is concerned, it is empirical, fixed, and one variable is changed at a time. Focus is on optimization and reproducibility. As against that, here in the QBD approach, multivariate experiments are carried out. A design space is established. Modern tools such as PAT tools, statistical tools are used. And the focus is on robustness and life cycle approach to validation. Thus, QBD approach is far, far superior to the traditional concept of end product testing or carrying out tests intermittently and coming up with a fixed formula that needs to be run. There is a there is scope for continuous improvement in quality in the QBD approach. Pharmaceutical development consists of various elements of quality by design. The figure that is shown here, the flow chart that is shown on this slide gives a pictorial representation of the key elements of pharmaceutical development that is define quality target product profile qttp which we will look at in the next slide identify the quality attributes of the formulation perform a risk analysis determine the critical quality attributes and critical process parameters which we will look at in the upcoming slides Determine the design space and identify a control strategy. Okay, so we are going to look at the various elements of QBD, including the quality target product profile, quality attributes, risk analysis, critical quality attributes, and critical process parameters, as well as control strategy. So what exactly is QTPP? That is the quality target product profile. If you look at ICH Q8R2 guidelines, it says that QTPP is a prospective summary of the quality characteristics of the drug product that ideally should be achieved to ensure the desired quality taking into account the safety and the efficacy of the drug product. Thus, relevant product characteristics that are affecting the patient become a part of QTPP. So, tablet hardness or disintegration is not a part of QTPP. Rather, information such as the intended use, route of administration, dosage form, delivery system, dosage strength, type of and nature of container closure system, the release or delivery of the drug and sterility, purity, stability, release of the drug, etc. form elements form a part of the QTPP. Thus, the product uh, quality target product profile forms the basis of the design for the development of the product. 
and includes all those parameters which are directly correlated to the patient health. Let us now look at and try to understand the second element of QBD that is the critical quality attribute. A CQA is a physical, chemical, biological or microbiological property or a characteristic that should be within an appropriate limit or range or distribution to ensure the desired product quality. CQAs are generally associated with drug substance, excipients, intermediates and drug products. CQAs of solid oral dosage forms are typically those aspects which will affect the product purity, strength, release and stability. CQAs for other delivery systems may additionally include more product specific aspects such as the aerodynamic properties for inhaled products, sterility for parenterals and adhesion properties for transdermal patches. For drug substances or raw materials or intermediates, the CQAs can additionally include properties that will affect the final drug product. Thus, the particle size distribution of the drug substance is going to critically affect the dissolution of the drug product and therefore becomes a critical quality attribute of the drug substance. Moving forward, the next element of QBD is that of risk assessment. Remember, in any operation that is carried out in the pharmaceutical industry, there is always a risk that the desired quality may not be achieved. Therefore, it is very, very important to carry out a risk assessment activity. Thus, risk assessment is a valuable science-based process that is used in quality risk management, which can aid in identifying which material attributes and process parameters potentially have an effect on the product CQA. Risk assessment is typically performed early in the pharmaceutical development process and is repeated as more information becomes available and greater knowledge is obtained. There are several risk assessment tools available and these are used to identify and rank the parameters with a potential to have an impact on product quality and based on prior knowledge and initial experimentation data. Okay, thus assessment of risk is a very important activity that needs to be carried out and in carrying out the risk assessment, what is the goal? The goal is to identify which material attribute, that is the quality of the materials, input materials, and which process parameters can have a detrimental effect on the product's critical quality attributes. Next, we have come across this terminology of design space several times in during this lecture. So what exactly is this design space, which is another element of QBD? <coughs> the relationship between the process input, that is the materials and the process parameter, the materials and process parameters and the critical quality attribute is described in what is called as the design space. Okay, so if you look at the figure, simple figure that I have put up here, you can see that the critical quality attribute, which is dissolution or rate of dissolution of the drug from the uh, drug product is on the, is plotted on the X axis and on the y axis and the z axis are plotted the material attributes or the process parameters thus the uh, to give you a simple example two parameters that is particle size and the bulk density of the granules 
are plotted against dissolution and the resultant graph will is uh, what we obtain the three dimensional graph is called as the design space and this you can see is the behavior of the uh, particular drug product so the dissolution for example at a particular level of particle size uh, as the particle size changes increases and then gradually decreases similarly as the parameter to which in this case would be the density of the granules as the density of the granules increases the behavioral the dissolution pattern changes thus the influence of two parameters on one critical quality attribute in this case is dissolution can be easily estimated and the region within which this work is carried out that is the limits within which this work is carried out that is limit on the particle size and the limit on the bulk density of granules forms the design space so design space is nothing but the relationship between the process input and the in the earlier case we discussed about the particle size and bulk density of granules and critical quality attribute which is dissolution so the relationship between the process inputs and the critical quality attributes can be described in the design space and such a design space should be designed and proposed by the applicant and submitted to regulatory agencies for assessment and approval so the design space is described in terms of the range so the uh, the minimum particle size and the maximum particle size is the range the density of the granules minimum and maximum value forms the range of the material attribute and process parameters thus design space can be described in terms of range or through more complex mathematical relationships design space can be described as a time dependent function or is a combination of variables such as components of a multivariate model so what this basically says is that the two variables the two uh, material attributes which are plotted on the y axis and the z axis out of that one may be time so here we can see in a more closer setting the critical quality attribute of the drug product that is dissolution plotted as a function of parameter 1 which is time and parameter 2 which is particle size okay to give you a simple example next we let us try to understand what is a control strategy as you know the word control means that you ensure that the Uh, readings or the observations fall within a particular range for which controls need to be exercised therefore a controlled strategy is such that it is designed to ensure that a product of the required quality can be produced consistently the elements of control strategy should describe and justify how in process controls and controls of the input materials that is the drug substance and excipients or intermediates and or container closure system or drug product contributes to the final product quality such controls that are devised should be based on the product or the formulation and process understanding and should include at a minimum the control of the critical process parameters and the material attributes thus the activities that are to be carried out to ensure that the product is of the desired quality should arise out of a control strategy wherein control is exercised not only on the process but on the in process uh, parameters and input materials intermediates container closure systems drug products etc and such a control should be based on information or knowledge about the product the formulation and the process a control strategy can include but is not limited to 
control of input material attributes that is the raw materials that is drug substance excipients primary packaging materials it is uh, the control strategy can also include product specifications controls for unit operations that have an impact on the product processing or quality for example the impact of drying on degradation impact of particle size distribution of the granules on the dissolution and control strategy can also include in process or real time release testing in lieu of end product testing that is to replace end product testing by in process testing or real time release testing 